Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, well, it's afternoon here, actually. So welcome to this live stream. I want to make sure that everything's working OK. Um, just give me. There we go. OK, you can hear me on the other computer. All right. So we've got the charts in front of us. It's a live stream. I've got half an hour. Uh, please put your questions up if you've got any. I'm going to try and go through each different sort of uh, instrument sector or type uh, one by one. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to try and chop it up into smaller segments so I can up those, upload those to YouTube under their own titles or headings. So that's what I'm going to do. So if you've got questions about forex, about gas, natural gas, about oil, en any energies, um, uranium, etc., or about stocks, or about metals, or about Bitcoin, or anything like that, post those up in this chat and we'll get going. In order to segment this properly, I'm going to um, go through four different things. Um, first of all, currencies, then stocks, then metals, then commodities and energies, and then some other stuff like Bitcoin. So <clears throat> I'll go to the end of each section, and then I'll ask you, I'll have a look at the comments and chat section to see if there's anything that's coming up, and I'll answer those if they're related to this section. So we're going to start with currencies. If you've got anything about currencies that you're interested in, any questions that you want to ask, now's the time, and I'll cover those at the end of this segment. So let's go through all of them. Dollar index, let's have a look at this. So really, we want to know, basically, when it comes to currencies, what the Fed's going to do, and are we going to see interest rates staying higher for longer, or are we going to see... Um, an interest rate cut coming up in the next month, in the next at the next meeting uh, in May. Probably, uh, I, I think actually there's a good chance that they may cut and that we may see dollar weakness following that. But until then, I think we could see some dollar strength. We've already seen the Swiss National Bank cutting uh, their interest rate. We did, however, see the Japanese uh, government, um, Ministry of Finance and the Bank of Japan, raising their interest rates from minus 0.5. I stand under correction. I think it was minus naught point, minus a half a percent, and it's now zero percent. So they've actually raised their interest rates, but that's a whole different scenario, which we have, we have we have to treat differently. So, dollar index, as you can see, is really stuck in the middle of this big range, and I've drawn some channels in here variously to illustrate where we are. But if you go back to the beginning of 2023, January 23, that's where my mouse is right now, compared to where we are today. Uh, that's um, nine months, sorry, 12, 14, 14 months later, excuse me for a second. I forgot to close my office door. 14 months later, 14 months, we're still exactly where we were uh, at that time at the beginning of January, in January 2023. And that's where we are today. So really just a sideways move. In the bigger picture, however, the dollar is actually moving slightly up. Um, everyone thinks that the dollar is showing weakness. Um, that we're due to get a weaker dollar. If you think about it, which currency do you think, um, considering the global scenarios and what's going on in China, what's going on in Europe, um, England retail sales numbers came out today, basically zero, basically flat. Um, we've seen the British pound actually under pressure. Uh, we've seen poor economic performance coming out of various places in Europe, including England this, and Germany. Um, and general, um, this idea that we may actually see the dollar holding stronger than other currencies because the U.S., because of economic strength, job growth, inflation is a problem. We all know that. But various other things point to the idea that the U.S. may delay raising rates for a longer period of time than other countries. We've already seen Switzerland reducing rates. So that might prop up the dollar. Look at this long term, long term channel. This goes back to 2015. And I could actually pull this. I'm not sure how far I can go back on here. Let's try to get this onto a weekly chart. See if this makes sense. So there's the weekly chart for the dollar, the dollar index, made up main, mainly of the euro, uh, the pound, Swiss franc, uh, Japanese yen, and Norwegian krona. Um, it's going up. The dollar is showing strength. So this idea of dollar weakness is not, um, it's not shown on the charts. Yes, it's weaker than it was in 2000. Um, but since the beginning of, well, really, 2005 to 2007, the dollar has been on a steady path upwards. We've seen the euro and the pound and 
uh, not so much the Swiss franc, but those other two moving downwards as we go along. So what do I expect? I think we could just really expect general dollar strength, except for possibly against the yen. Now, the yen is a different story. We're short on this one. Uh, we're short on the dollar yen. We're short on the Swiss yen. We got in right at the top here in Swiss yen. Um, I think around, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, those of you who are in my private group will know the exact number, but I think it's above, I think it's about 170.4 that we got in almost at the top of this rally and we're now down at 168.2 so we're about 200 pips down 220 pips up in profit down on this market which is really good news and i see the euro yens coming off as well just what i said earlier that we're seeing dollar strength but not against the yen we're seeing yen strength and dollar strength simultaneously that's what's causing this dollar yen to go nowhere because they're both fighting against each other. The dollar's trying to get stronger, the yen's trying to get stronger, stuck nowhere. But against the euro and the pound, the yen is gaining strength. And the euro and the pound are also gaining strength against the dollar. So a bit of a mess, really. And it all depends on what happens with inflation and interest rates around the world and particularly in the US. So those are my positions, short dollar yen. Uh, from around 140, uh, below 150 actually, 149 something. So we're 100 and something pips out of the market, out of out of the money on, on dollar yen, but a, a couple of hundred pips in the money on Swiss yen. So we'll see how that goes. But overall, I'm aiming on dollar yen for a move down to 130, let's say, maybe 140, 130 possibly. And for these yen crosses, euro yen, Swiss yen, to move down quite dramatically as we, I think that's where the path of least resistance is. When it comes to the majors, I really don't know. I think it's going to be very choppy. We've got an election year. We've got interest rates, cuts coming up, predicted, planned ideas about longer, for, higher for longer or earlier cuts. Lots of conflicting opinions about this. And Jerome Powell's demeanor in his last statements to the press and his uh, report was a bit weird, to be honest. He wasn't, he wasn't normal. He was sort of... Um, I just looked like he'd sort of given up. I'm just going to check on this other computer to make sure. Live streams are very tricky, guys. It's not, not something that I often do, as you know, and it's not easy. So I've got three computers with different things running at the same time, and the market's going to open in 23 minutes' time, and I've got to be ready for it because we're in quite a lot of positions right now. Let's go across to stocks. That's currencies. Let me have a look, actually. I'm going to go and have a look at the questions. Let me do that before I go into stocks quickly. Another screen. Let's see if we can get comments on currencies. Let's see. If you've got a currency comment, put it up right now. Otherwise, we're going to go. By the way, guys, by the way, I want to put something up here. Um, my new favorite band. I'd like to hear from you whilst you're in um, whilst you're in this, in this room. I'm going to try and uh, hang on one second. Um, I'm going to see if I can put the link up here. Damn, I'm losing my place. Check this band out. Yeah, Livingston. Livingston. I don't know how you say it in uh, in in American, but it's Livingston in English, proper English. All right. So, um, good afternoon, Tesla. We're going to get to Tesla shortly. Uh, so, no more questions on currencies. I don't think I'm a, I've got a big currency trader following, so that's okay. A lot of people are interested in natural gas stocks, gold and bitcoin not so much in currencies it used to be the flip when i started trading 25 years ago almost now uh currency trading was the thing the new thing the interesting thing and that seems to have dwindled down a little bit in certain parts of the world just checking there again all right now let's go across to stocks right so um why is that missing Ah, uh, hang on one second. I want to have a look at the NASDAQ. Ah, oh, where's it gone? This is the one. And then SPX we've got. All right, so here we go. Here's the NASDAQ. Um, I'm not sure if this is the right one, actually. It's not the one I wanted. No, we're going to go to the black ball. We'll stick with this one. All right, so NASDAQ, 
Um, really, the, the trend's just going up. Hit, notice that we've tried to pierce this 20 period moving average several times. There it is there, this green line. <clears throat> Excuse me. We tried recently. We've not had two daily closes beneath the 20 period moving average. That's what will trigger this indicator that you see at the top here, these red triangles and the green triangles. These are my own indicators. I've tried to make it public on TradingView. Every time I put it up, it's my own code. It's a very simple code. They take it down. I don't know why. If some of you can give me some ideas, perhaps you could email me. I'm still looking for a social media manager. I'm still looking for someone to help me out in my office. If you've got time and the interest in trading and social media and uploading videos and doing things that I do, um, apart from trading, which if you're a trader as well, that would be great. Uh, that would be great. But so I can't figure out how to get these indicators ready for everyone else in the general public. It stays up for a day and then it gets taken down. I don't know why. But um, basically, this is triggered by two daily closes above the moving the 20 period moving average, simple 20 period moving average, or two daily closes, see two daily closes below. Uh, it's as simple as that. So we have not had a green, we've not had a green or a red trigger for the last couple of days. Well, actually, it was still green yesterday. We did close above two days in a row, but we've had several piercings of it down um, through the 20, but not, not lasting more than a day. There's the 50, there's the 100, there's the 200 and various supports. I continue to think that we'll see the NASDAQ and the S&P, they both rally 20 something, 25, I think the NASDAQ's 27%. Let's just check since these lows, when was this? Let's go back to the beginning of this year and have a look how much the NASDAQ has rallied. And let's just take October, 2023, not quite the beginning of the year, up until the high 30.1%. We'll call it 31% actually. 30.9%, call it 31% rally since almost the beginning of the year, just before the end of 2023, up to where we are now. So that's a 30% rally. It's way too much. It's got to come down. We need to have a correction. It's not going to just keep on going up. We're not going to get to 40, 50, 100, 200. At some point, the market needs a healthy correction. Now's a good time. I'll tell you why, because we've got elections coming up in October. Um, at the end of the year, we've got the campaign starting already. Uh, we've got the VP selections. We've got interest rate deliberations by uh, the Fed. We've got markets that are out of control. Way too hot. Everything's hot. Uh, inflation's getting hot again. Um, GDP's been hot. Uh, job growth has been hot. Uh, inflation uh, wage rate growth has been hot. Stock markets have been hot. Bond markets have been hot. Gold, Bitcoin, you name it. It's all overheating dramatically. We need to have a bit of a calm period. But I think we're going to see some more potential strength in the stock market as the year progresses. And a lot of it, I think, has got a lot to do with politics and Jerome Powell and the Fed. But um, how and if there will be any political inter interference or not, I don't know. But if they are going to interfere and allow, or actually, rather, let me say, if they are going to take away any current interference and allow the market to pull back to pick up some more buyers, to clean out some weak hands, to you know, to gather some strength, pick up some more liquidity, and so on. Now is a good time because we're running out of time before the end of the year, before the rate cut, potential rate cut meetings by the Fed occur and the election campaigning and that sort of thing. Now is a good time for this market to pull back, perhaps to the 100 period moving average, perhaps even to the 200 period moving average. That wouldn't be out of context. Um, the market generally always pulls back all the 200. Um, catches up with the market price. Uh, the, the 200 is this blue purple line, as you can see, it's often visited. It's a favorite place for the market to eventually go, but not, you know, sometimes you can stay away from it for a long time. So let's look at the 100. That's this gray, green line, uh, gray line, sorry. We visit the gray line for far more often. The red line is the 50. We visit that more often than the, red, the gray line. And so let's start with a 50. If we can just get to the 50, break down through the 20, Breaking through the 20, close beneath it, will we'll trigger the algos. It happened on this occasion here, but we didn't manage to move below that swing low. And that's what prevented the algos from selling at that move. Have a look at that very closely. We closed beneath the 20, but not beneath that previous swing low. That prevented the algos from triggering this into a, a calamitous collapse or something like that. So that's where we go. I'm, I'm short on NASDAQ. I'm aiming for somewhere around down into these moving averages. I don't know exactly where. I'm hoping for somewhere around 15,850. I'm hoping for that. 
and we'll see how we go. s and I'm going to tell you my other position shortly. We've got 15 minutes left on this stream. There's the rising wedge on S&P. It's pretty simple. It's a rising wedge. It's a, it's a reversal pattern. In this case, a bearish reversal pattern. We've touched the top of this wedge um, and we sold yesterday. We have no other evidence that this may or may not turn around. We just got to the technical top of the wedge. It's a bearish reversal pattern. We've got an overextended market. Let's see how far the, the S&P has come since October. And we can do exactly the same thing. This is October 23rd, 27th of October last year. Let's see how far we got on S&P to the very high. 28.2% on S&P. So, you know, it's not going to go to 35%. 49%, 73%, 200%. It's got to come back to pick up some liquidity. Once again, I've got some lines drawn here. You can study, the, you know, study them at, the, at your own time. You will notice that weirdly and coincidentally, these horizontal lines coincide today. They're not going to soon because these moving averages will move up higher. If, we, if, we, if the price carries on moving higher or stays higher, the moving averages will move up. But today... Every one of these moving averages is precisely on these horizontal lines of support and resistance that I have drawn in. So those are the targets. You can check that out. And I don't know how far, how quickly, how low we'll go. I have no idea. We have nothing on AMD, although I do kind of, I, I put all the chip stocks into one basket. You've got AMD, NVIDIA, um, uh, Intel, um, mm, in, uh, the micro semiconductor chip stock, I can never remember the name. There's a whole bunch of them in one basket. And the only question here is how long can this last? AMD seems to be showing some weakness. NVIDIA, the, uh, the Mercedes Benz of chip stocks. Um, most of the stuff that comes out of Taiwan, by the way. And that's also keeping this price quite high because there is some political threat to Taiwan, I believe. If you can believe what politicians and wannabe politicians have to say, Taiwan is a problematic zone in the world because 90%, 92, I think, of all the high-end chips come out of, of uh, Taiwan. And I think that's keeping, the, and there is some political saber rattling going on around Taiwan and China. And I think that's also contributing to these uh, remaining high. However, there is demand. The, the numbers have been fantastic. There's still a lot of hype around. We're not seeing any weakness in NVIDIA. Notice the 20 period moving average. And again, these indicators, these red and green triangles on all of these charts are doing exactly the same thing. If we close twice below the 20-day simple moving average, it will trigger a red uh, triangle at the top. And if we close twice above the 20-period moving average uh, daily, 20 SMA, we'll get um, above the 20 SMA or below it. Okay, I'm getting tongue-tied now. This is a problem with live stream. If we close above it twice, we get a green arrow. If we close below it twice, we get a red arrow. And right now, we have green arrows across the board, except for AMD and Tesla and Apple. All of these other ones, the NASDAQ, S&P, uh, AMD is now turned red, as you can see. NVIDIA, firmly green. We're still above the 20 period. And Apple is below, although only one day so far, just yesterday. We have not created a green, uh, a red arrow on Apple because We've only had one day below the 20 period moving average. And on Tesla, we've had loads of days. Now, my positions very briefly, and I'll have a look at the questions hereafter. We're short on NASDAQ, short on S&P right at the very top. Uh, nothing on AMD, which is, I think, maybe forewarning that we have some weakness in uh, stocks, in chip stocks particularly. Is this going to carry on lower? I don't know. I mean, you know, we've got to see this market coming down. And the only thing that's going to pull it down um, quickly and dramatically for a good solid 10, maybe 15% correction, which is all we want for this market to pick up strength and carry on, uh, then the chip stocks are going to have to lead the way. Um, AMD seems to be trying to do that already. So how far could we go on AMD? We could go a lot lower. We've got our order blocks and support lines below us here, all the way down to 110. We've got the 200 period moving average at 130. We've got the, the 100 period moving average at 150. And then this one where we are right now on the 50 day moving average, still looking weak. We had a gap down. We've closed convincingly below this 20 period moving average and it's looking weak. So someone's asked me about NVIDIA and uh, AMD. I, I just, I think AMD may be leading the way. Um, it's looking weak. Tesla's not, uh, NVIDIA is not looking weak, um, but we shall see. 
Could it be pre fall Friday today? Markets are trying to set up for something like that right now as we're talking. So who knows? Anything can happen. Um, Apple, I'm long, and Tesla, I'm long. Not for any other reason. I don't think they, you know, I, you know, Apple's not looking bullish. Tesla's not looking bullish. But I've taken those long trades as a hedge against my short uh, NASDAQ, NVIDIA, S&P. So I'm short, and short NASDAQ, S&P, NVIDIA, long Apple, long Tesla. That's the one reason, as a hedge. But secondly, because we've reached really low levels on, on these uh, stocks. I think they're good stocks. I'm not a great electric vehicle fan myself, but that's a whole different story. In the longer term picture, I think Tesla could pick up from where we are now, certainly as long as we hold above 100, which is where I bought the last time at the bottom when everyone was selling. So can we get back to 100 and make a double bottom? Maybe. I don't know. We're at 170 now. Um, but I'm... I'm long on Tesla, short on NVIDIA, short on NASDAQ, short on SP, also long on Apple. And Apple has been late to the AI party. Keep that in mind. We're right into this big support block here, big order block, support zone, uh, demand zone, whatever you want to call it. Um, the names change every year. It's fine. Just means support. We've come back down to support right now, big support area. Apple missed out on the AI craze. I think it's going to catch up with its new kit that's coming out now. And there's also talk with uh, Google AI to do something special. There's an antitrust case against all of that. That will blow over as it always does, of course, or Apple will make some um, concessions, but they won't be uh, t too much to, to be worried about, I don't think. Now, gold. Um, I've pointed this out. I don't want to talk about silver because I don't like the silver chart. I keep on saying that. This is my idea on gold. Uh, we've made a new high. We've made a spike high, but not only that, uh, we're stuck in the middle of this channel. This is the channel center line, this blue line. We're right on it. We're diddling in the middle. Let me just reset this again. This doesn't look great. And uh, so I've got two paths that we could follow. I don't know which one we're going to follow. I don't really care. I'll sell at the top or I'll buy at the bottom. One of the two, whichever one comes first, uh, it's all yours, gentlemen. Who can get to that level first? That's where I'll be either selling or buying. Um, we're forming a one up, one down here, by the way. That's a spike high. Today's a spike low. That's a reversal pattern, one of my favorites, as I keep on telling you. Um, ad nauseum. So one up, one down. Maybe that's the way today will close, unless this just collapses down further below here. But that's the idea on gold. So that's all I have on gold and silver. I'm not um, particularly interested in silver. Uh, one of the reasons is because I don't know which way this economy is going to go. I don't know what the Fed's going to do. And, uh, you know, if we get a, a liquidity drain, metals are going to suffer. If we get injection, money flow um, into the markets, interest rate cuts, optimism or fear. Uh, that's the good thing about gold. Gold can tend to be buoyant when uh, there's money around, um, when there's uh, quantitative easing occurring. Gold loves that. But gold also is a safe haven. And when markets are tough and times are tough, things are tricky. Gold also sometimes gets a bit. So that's why it's called a safe haven. It does pretty well in uh, uh, liquid markets. And it does pretty well considering or at least holds its own in illiquid markets. And that's why people invest in gold. But it's a slow mover, not that exciting. And there's a big overnight carry cost on gold. If you're willing to hold that and pay I don't know what is it, a few pips a day, you can do so, but I, I find that annoying. Right, now I'm going to carry on back to where we were and quickly look at some questions, see if we've got anything on metals. Uh, 48 people smashing the like. Thank you so much. All right, let's see what we can go through. I'm, I'm going to come to the rest shortly. Um, so Martin says, yes, Tesla's selling pretty hard in pre-market. I can't trade in pre-market, Martin, so... Uh, I generally just don't really care what's going on until uh, pre-market is over and done with. But I see Tesla is moving down. So 166 now was at 173. And that's actually one of the reasons why we're seeing some fall off in the NASDAQ and the S&P. All right. Uh, Widow maker Natty. Okay. I'm just trying to see. I've got a bit of light in my eyes. Um, uh, okay. I'm not going to talk about gas at the moment. Sugar. Someone wants to talk about sugar and cocoa. They go together. Let's talk about that. We're getting to that chart shortly. I'm seeing if there's anything else on stocks. Nat gas again. Um, 
Let's see what's here. Repetition is your best teacher. That's true. All right. So, um, and then uh, Apple DOJ news hit bad yesterday. Yes, it hit bad. I don't worry about that sort of thing too much. Bad news for Apple, but they'll resolve it and Apple will carry on. Apple will launch its new AI stuff and uh, get a, a fresh bid, I suppose. That's what it normally does. All right. So let's go across to some of these commodities. First of all, okay, uh, let's take the elephant out of the room. Uh, first of all, for some of us, uh, not me, luckily at the moment, because I'm out of this, we took a little bit of profit twice on cocoa, actually, just a, a few hundred dollars on each occasion, uh, selling cocoa. We had this pattern here, which is a, um, a megaphone. I'm just gonna see if I can redraw this actually a little bit better. We're at the top of this megaphone now, and uh, I'm going to put this on a four-hour chart. Just for those of you trading cocoa, I'm tempted to sell this, but I can't sell it because um, not at least not on my client's accounts because of the way these contracts are sized and the way my client's accounts are managed. Um, uh, but I have done it twice. Uh, once when um, we had that freeze and sort of market cornering event, uh, and that was resolved, no problem at all. Um, I actually got stuck in some trades and the broker was was not able, the broker just stopped trading. So I got stuck in some trades, was unable to exit those trades right down here, actually at 6,000 something, at six and a half to six, nine, somewhere around here. And I got stuck there with open trades and it went many tens of thousands of dollars against me. And my broker, God bless them, uh, or just bless them, if you're religious, you might say, God bless them. I used to be a pastor, finally. I'm now an atheist. That's an interesting discussion for another forum and occasion. But, um, and I've now forgotten what I was going to say. Yes, God bless the brokers because they refunded the entire amount because there was a problem with their liquidity providers. Now, we're back at, we're almost at 9,000. And at this megaphone top, we did get in twice after that event, once over here, once yesterday. Took a little bit of profit on each of those at the bottom very quickly got out being a pretty scared and i can't really manage this trade properly trading it with my current managed accounts it's because of the way the mam trading account copy trading system is structured uh, it doesn't give me the full flexibility i need having said that i do like this part here right at the top of the mega right at the top of the mega man. if it breaks out through the top here i expect it will be a brief spike up back down into the megaphone, and then back down to the bottom. That's kind of what I'm thinking on Coco. I'm saying it uh, with tongue in cheek because I'm not in this trade currently. And I'm probably not planning on getting back into it. Now, URA, we're long on. I think uranium generally, I think everyone agrees. It's not going to be a fast mover, but it's an interesting play. Um, I think there's demand for uranium. Prices are pretty good, pretty cheap still. I think we've got a long way to go up on this but it's going to be slow and zigzaggy. We're long on both URA and UEC. People ask me a lot, which one's better? There's no, there's, I don't have any preference between you. I, I've got a bit of both, so um, it doesn't really matter. Those arrows are where we got into these trades twice here. Uh, sorry, once here on U, UEC, that was a couple of days ago. And we've been holding this URA for it. We've taken some profits at the tops. We got out here. We sold actually, we sold when we got that blowout top after the uh, all the hype and uh, we got out of that and we've now rebought. So very slow moving. This has been stuck where it is more or less for a month, more than a month now. So not very exciting. Natural gas. Now, my broker has rolled over. Yours will not have if you're trading something akin to the Henry Hub. I've, I've covered this in the previous video. I'm going to cover it very briefly. I don't want to go into too much detail, but this is the, because I've covered it in the six minute video this morning already. This is the, the, uh, the futures price. This is now the May futures on my chart. My broker has rolled over. That candle there is the rollover candle. It took place in a split second. It's not a four hour move. It, it shows in the four hour candle, but it's an ins instantaneous move at the rollover. We're now just pulling back a little bit into these moving averages. I expect we'll pull back. We'll probably get a little. I'm hoping that we'll find support. It was possible, of course, that we could have just carried on moving higher. We're in this resistance zone and we're pulling back. I only have a 40% position on this now. I'm looking to add more. I'm actually hoping for it to pull back. I haven't loaded up here after the rollover. I lost 10 cents on the roll. I got out at 71, got in at 81. 
and we're now at 70, 79. So I'm now uh, more or less where I got in, a couple of cents down. But I'm willing to add, and I've only got a small portion on this, so 40%. On the Henry Hub, this chart here on the right at the top, this is the uh, NYMEX Henry Hub price. This is still the previous contract. So let's have a look here. You can see the contract rolls over. Everything's gone a bit slow. I don't know why it's gone slow. So the contract rolls over on Tuesday, and we roll over from April into May, as you can see there. And uh, well, that's where we are. Then. We've got this bottom, quadruple bottom really now, just testing that bottom again. With a bit of luck today, we'll just hold there again and move up. I don't know. We're below the 20 period moving average. You have not rolled over on the NYMEX Henry Hub yet. And that's still doing its thing. Tuesday's the rollover. We'll have to see how we go. Um, and that's all I can say about that. But I am long. 40% position. Coco, we've talked about. WTI, I'm short. We got in right at the top. And um, my charts are on go slow. I don't know what's going on. I think I'm running out of memory on this. Uh, I'm, I'm working on a MacBook Air. So we got short there. We also got short um, a little uh, somewhere a little earlier. So I think we're in profit on, we're definitely in profit on this short right from the top. I'm not sure about the other one. I haven't had a look at just now. But just moving back up to the 20 period moving average on uh, WTI oil, you can see we're below it. We've got red triangles on our indicator, my indicator, and moving down. We're holding above the 50. We're stuck below the 20. We're in between the two. We've got to get down below the 50, down below the 100, down through this channel center line, down through the 20 period moving, uh, the 200 period moving average. That's that one there, down to the channel bottom. That's my first target. That's at about 75. Then I think we could go much lower. And I think I'm aiming for somewhere around about the 60s uh, to start with. So here's the day chart. There's the channel bottom at 75. And I'm aiming, I'm, I'm aiming for below 70 down into these regions here. First supports, big support levels are the major supports around about the $70 level in these green zones. And then there's more to go. If we break this level down here at 67, there's a long way for WTI to drop. We could get into the 50s and even sig I suppose, significantly lower. That's that. And then finally, Bitcoin. Uh, we're long, I'm, an, I'm long on Bitcoin. I've got three dots here. I I'm not going to talk about ETH because let's just cover this. I'm worried about my computer RAM running out right now. Um, so here's ETH. We're just trading in this channel, Ethereum. For those of you, I've drawn this beautiful chart. We've got two channels, one going down, one going up. We're in the up channel right now. I think we need to get back down to the top side of the down side channel and then and then start to move up. A decent correction would be lovely. Maybe to the bottom of this channel, that would take us to around about 19 and a half, 19,000, call it, uh, not 19,000, 1,970, call it 2,000. Call it 2,000 on Ethereum. Big round number, huge number, 2,000. Let's say we could get back there. If we fail 2,000, there's a good chance of that. I'd say a fair chance of that, then we'd be looking at the next level, which is about, well, quite a lot lower, uh, 12, 1,200. Okay, so that's my plan on Ethereum. Until then, I'm not really interested in it, but I am long on Bitcoin and uh, in profit at the moment and looking for this channel line to hold. If it doesn't hold, I've got further green dots. I need to move this along green circles or blobs where we could get to. I don't think if we get below 50,000, that I'd like to hold on to this anymore. So that's my last adding zone there. Uh, so following some sort of path and then up again. However, I'd really like it to hold here. We have broken the 20 period moving average. We are testing channel bottom right now as I speak. And that's it, folks. Uh, we managed to do this in 34 minutes. I'm gonna go back to the question, see if there's anything else. If there isn't, I'm gonna finish this off because the market's just opened and I need to get to my trading. Uh, Yes, Ben, I do have a track record. You can, you can consult me. I've got a, an extensive, lengthy track record. Uh, real money, real trades, um, uh, real, you know, significant money, really. Uh, you can email me for that if you want. I'm happy to share that for you. Um, <laughs> I can't be an atheist. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's an interesting chat. So if you like to see my trading tra track records um, and no excuse me for scratching my nose, I have an itch. Um, just email me, I'll, I'll send you everything I've got. It is a dramatic change. 
Okay, folks, that's it. Live stream over. Hope you have a fantastic trading day. Markets are moving lower. Just let's scan across to see what we've got. I'll look at my big screen over here and see what's happening. Dollar yen. Okay, I'm going to be talking away from myself now. Dollar yen, well, still about 151, but it's trying at least. We're not moving higher and we'll see how we go. But we are moving lower on the euro yen, Swiss yen. Uh, I've got nothing on the euro and the pound, as you know. And then I'm just looking at my big screen because I've now got I've got the pre-market prices on here. That's why I have to glance at the other one. NVIDIA moving up a little bit. Uh, actually, I've got the markets open now so I can see the whole thing. NVIDIA moving up a wee bit, but actually nothing serious. NASDAQ trying to move down. Apple mm, fractioning down. Tesla right down at the channel bottom. Actually, I want to show you Tesla, show you where we are right now whilst we've got this on here. Um, Uh, just going to put on the NASDAQ derivative of this and just show you very quickly where we are. So that's where we are now. See that downward channel. Now, some would call that uh, a bear flag, uh, sorry, a bull flag on Tesla. All right, a very long one, but it's definitely a bull flag. There's the move up flag move up. We're at the bottom of the flag, bottom of the channel. I'm long from here. So yeah, we'll have to see how, see how that goes. Wanted to show you that on Tesla. Um, but remember, it's a hedge against shorts. I've got across the board and others not across the board, but on NVIDIA and NASDAQ. And then gold, uh, just moving down, just looking at these charts again, the big screens. Natural gas moving down. Not to worry about that. I've got a small, very small position. Well, it's 40%. It was just not tiny, but it's small. I'd like to pick up some more bit lower down. We'll have a look at that more closely in our live trading room. If you'd like to join my live trading room, please, um, there's a link below. Or you can join this YouTube channel. There's also a link that says join underneath this video. You can join that. There are two tiers, one very cheap, one a little bit more expensive. And when I say really cheap, it's like, a, I think it's a dollar or less than a dollar. And then Bitcoin, um, yeah. I don't know if we're going to hold here in Bitcoin. I don't know. It's it's moving down. Um, but once again, I've got a, a small enough position on here. I, if it moves up higher dramatically with my current position, I'll make a decent profit on it. Um, but it's got to move up a lot. Um, between like 75, 80, 85, 100,000, 90 something maybe. Uh, but if it moves down, uh, down to 50,000, it's not too bad at all for me. It's pretty good. Actually, I'll add some more size on if we can. So that's that. And uh, Coinbase, we were short Coinbase. We got out of the shorts, although I'm just looking at something that I haven't covered in here. Let's quickly look at Coinbase whilst we're here. Have I got Coinbase on this chart? Yeah. So look, if Bitcoin does move down, down and follows that path where I've got those green things, blobs, circles, then we could well see Coinbase move down too. We are above the 20 period moving average on Coinbase, but we've got a double top. I'm not going to short this, but if you are interested in shorting the market and you're not into anything, I think Coinbase looks pretty good. I've got enough shorts on at the moment. I'm not trading Coinbase. I'm not tr trading Coinbase. Okay, folks, have a great day. I've got to go. See you soon. Love you all. No, I didn't really, I don't really, but you know, I like you all a lot. Take care.